man. So Demetrius Andres re-ups with the zone in the match room. And he says that, you know, that they had a great 18 months together. And that, you know, he looks forward to the next, I guess, two years or probably the next 18, who knows, 16 months, whatever it might be. Because I guess it's a four, um, it's a four fight deal that he just signed with them. Which, you know, if he believes that's in his best interest and is what's best for his career, then, you know, congratulations to him. It just, you know, there's some questions you have to ask yourself. Um, first would be that if the, how exact, how exactly were the first 18 months so great for you? Um, you just, a couple of days ago, a couple of weeks ago, they have you, you know, doing interviews complaining about how you couldn't get the Gennady Golovkin fight how you couldn't get the Canelo Alvarez fight. You said they actually had Canelo Alvarez on protection, on the zone protection, where they're keeping him, you far away from him. You know, you said you had to sneak into the, the Gennady Golovkin fight and you had to sit, you know, sit back behind Eddie Hearn saying, hey, 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 get off me, get off me, get off me. So you could have a conversation with Gennady Golovkin about, you know, him fighting you. You know, but you weren't able to get those two major fights. You know, in one of your fights, there was so, your fight took so long to come on. By the time you started, you know, you got into your fight, there was nobody there. Like, literally, the crowd left because, you're, you know, that fight night went so far into the night. Most of the crowd left. Like, the seats were literally empty when you saw, when they saw you fighting. You have a match coming up next week. And the head, basically, the people that are being promoted... Are the YouTubers that are going to be on your on, on supposed to be in your undercard? I'm not. I wouldn't be surprised if they moved them up as the main event. But that's what they've been promoting, even on the posters. It's two YouTubers, and then they have you with a small little picture with no names on it. The most they've done as far as promoting you is doing like the new Bad Boys poster and photoshopping your head and Tevin Farmer's head onto the <laughs> onto the posters. So I mean. And they also haven't been able to get you the Charlo fight. So he hasn't been able to get you any of the major fights. So it begs the question, how exactly was it a great 18 months? Most of your fights, no one was talking about. Didn't get viewerships like that. Gates were, eh. That's what was going on when it pertains to you. So how exactly were those great fights? Or oh, a great 18 months? But if, you know, to you, if those, you know, those were good for you, then I guess no one can say anything. When it comes to the financial aspect of it, they have to beg the question. Why didn't you check around first and see what other people would offer you prior to signing, re reing up with the zone? Why would you have not done that? The same mistake I believe Terrence Crawford made when he just signed up with the zone. I mean, he signed up with ESPN without first seeing what all these other people had to offer him. The zone was, especially at the time, was just giving people crazy money. You didn't know what, and if you, even if you lose fans or you lose promotion, you, 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 you suffer as far as promotion by going to the zone. As far as billing yourself, who cares? You're not billing yourself now anyway. The, you know, ESPN's not promoting you. They're not building you up anyway. So you wouldn't have necessarily lost anything. You know, except you might have been financially in a better space. You didn't check to see what they would be able to offer you. You didn't check PBC to see what PBC had to offer you. Because then you could have taken these, you know, these offers that were given to you. And you could have went back to ESPN. He could have went back to ESPN and he could use it as leverage. You know what I mean? To get even a bigger deal. And that's why when this deal first came along and everybody was talking about all pumping his chest about the three, three million per fight, whatever. I said, that's a bad deal. He's shortchanging himself. He's worth substantially more than that, especially him being the only person that's bringing in any real viewership to ESPN. Tyson Fury came with his leverage, and you saw what he ended up getting. You know, hey, you want a piece of the heavyweight division? You want, you know, a way to possibly lure Dante Wild into a fight over here? You need me to do that. And they bit the bait, and they got him paid. When it comes to Demetrius Andres, it begs the question, why did he not do the same? Why did he not go to these different entities 
see what his worth was and then come back with that. Like Dante Wilder did. He did the same thing. <laughs> Went to the zone, got a huge offer. Went to ESPN, got a huge offer. Then he came back to Showtime and got $20 million to fight Dominic Brazil off pay-per-view. Got a major money to take on Ortiz in a, um, Ortiz on Fox. And now he's getting a substantial amount of money to face uh, Tyson Fury. And about where ESPN's putting up a whole lot of money and Fox is putting up money. You know? And he did that by leveraging other deals, seeing exactly what he was worth. Demetrius Andres didn't do that. So he has no idea what he's worth. He has no idea how much money he's actually leaving on the table. And if you're not going to get any of these big fights, you might as well get as much money as you possibly can. You know? But you didn't even do that one step of finding out what your worth is. And probably doing the same thing as Terrence Crawford did and shorting yourself. So when it comes to that, I don't know. So now you might have shorted yourself when it comes to that. And then on top of that, you're still not going to get these fights that you want. Gennady Golovkin's not fighting you. Canelo Alvarez is not fighting you. And Eddie Hearn's been able to, has shown that he's not able to get that Charlo fight for you. Charlo's not going to take a short <laughs> going to the zone. It's going to take a substantial amount of money to get him to the zone. And then it turns out that the quote offer that they gave him actually did didn't actually give him an offer like the heads of pbc said you know you know i guess number two in charge said i don't know where he sent that offer to i know, know he must have might have sent it to his head into his head somewhere but the people you know well, we didn't get no offer you know and like i said previously if eddie Hearn wants to make an actual real offer he knows the exact people he needs to contact in order to make that happen so i mean congratulations to demetrius andres um but it's kind of like a Terrence Crawford situation where if you then cannot get the fights that you want, you cannot complain. If you're not getting the type of promotion that you need or your brand is not being pushed to where it needs to be, you cannot complain. Because you have chosen to put yourself in the space that you are now, once again. To each his own. Like, subscribe, share. I'm out.